Hey, welcome back everyone. Live CUBE coverage here in the broadcast booth at VMware Explorer. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante, also my co-host in the CUBE pod. Check out the CUBE podcast. Every week we break down all the action. Go to siliconangle.com for all the stories. Of course, thecube.net, you'll find all the videos there. And today, this session, we're going to review the amazing panel we had yesterday, modernizing the digital first multi-cloud world, sponsored by Kindrel. We're here with Sunil Bargava, who's the senior VP of offerings with Kindrel, um, to review and just talk about the impact of that panel. We had Oracle Cloud, Azure Cloud, VMware, and of course, Kindrel. Very dynamic conversation. We're going to unpack that and more here. Dave, what a great conversation. Sunil, great to see you. Thanks for coming back on. Absolutely. It was Did, wonderful to be here yesterday and happy to be here today. This is kind of like a backstage kind of review, post-mortem. It was such a good um, video that we wanted to do kind of replay, but also yeah. dig deeper. Right. Because we hit on a bunch of things. Number one, I'll just summarize. The, the Oracle and Azure together on, on there with VMware showed multiple vendors talking multi-cloud in a way that was very productive. It was cooperative. If they're talking to each other, they were open, and a little bit of a debate, but not much debate, we're all on the same page. Yep. That, I think, was the biggest takeaway for our customers. What would normally be considered competitors actually sitting ready to cooperate for multi-cloud for the benefit of customers. Now, what we discussed yesterday was many customers end up in multi-cloud. And now that they're there, you have the issues of policy, of uh, skills that you have to naturally work on. And yes, yes, companies like Kindrel yeah. can help address those issues. I use some of our talk, okay, continue. Yeah, the one thing that we didn't get to cover so much is the deliberate move to multi-cloud and the new architectural concerns and the new culture concerns that come and why would you need to do that? As the clouds diverge with the investments they are all making, the opportunity to truly leverage the best of each of the vendor partners we have to get lower economies, faster agility, and really start addressing the needs of Gen AI and other operational requirements, that's the real opportunity. Well, and, and the, the Oracle Microsoft example is interesting because that is a, that's an example of a deliberate attempt to simplify. We were at SuperCloud 2, and I used that example with yeah. Insic Ray, who's a VC, and he's like, you lost me at Oracle. I'm like, no, that's not fair, because what they're doing <laughs> is actually making it transparent to customers, right? So that was a big, to, to us, a big step in that deliberate, what you're calling a deliberate move to multi-cloud. That's exactly right. And the, some of the announcements that we have heard this week at VM Explorer are all about making that easier. Being able to do the multi-cloud architectures, apply policy, modernize more rapidly, and I'm really looking forward to bringing those technologies to our customers. Now, that said, the press releases from you know, Microsoft, Oracle, et cetera, they make it sound like you just show up and everything works just perfectly. So what role does Kindrel play in actually achieving that simplification and more importantly, realizing that customer value? Because that's what it really is all about. That's a really good question. So all of these vendors are making the technology part easier and easier to do. But the plethora of technologies requires a skill set that now needs to be a mile wide and the second is all the nuances of the customer situation, whether it's policy, data, uh, compliance, data protection, integrations, and some challenges around latency and others that aren't quite available to be absorbed by Gen AI, aren't, aren't available to be absorbed by code. It really requires knowledge and experience. That's the value Kindrel brings, whether it is to modernize or to operate. So a lot of that is architectural, and, and, and some companies have that in-house expertise. Ma yes. Many many don't, or they maybe they don't have the bandwidth. Yep. Then you've got security concerns. I mean, we could talk for hours yes, about, right. about the, the menu of things you got to deal with. Yep. Uh, and the architectural about what is the existing state versus the multi-cloud architecture are two different skill sets. Hmm. And you need access to both to get the job done. So let's dig into the deliberate move, why you see it. Um, and first, I want to tell you a story. Last night after the panel, we were out uh, at the VMware Executive um, Mixer, and, and then we, we, we met up with you guys later. I've been using that line like, multi-cloud's like a collection of things. Broken toys, or toys you use once in a while, 
they don't really work well together. Okay. Um, I got Teams over here. I might have something in, in AWS here. I use Google for some big query. Sure. It's not threaded together. It's not running. And so, you know, which is we call super cloud, that kind of operating model. Right. And the feedback we're hearing from customers, I, I asked the VMware folks this, I was like, customers are driving the change, not so much the clouds. The clouds will be multi-cloud enabled with technology, but the customers are asking for stuff to work better together. So, and they agreed. This is your, you made this point yesterday in the panel, I want to get your thoughts. What is the deliberate move to the cloud look like? Why? What's the motivation? What's the starting point? What's the, what's the attitude of the customer? Yep. Are, they, are they apprehensive? Are they just hostile? I got to get to the cloud. Are they enthusiastic? What's the attitude of the customer as they move to the cloud? What's, what's inspiring them? That's a great point. You know, the move to a cloud was always hampered with security concerns and not being able to physically touch the hardware you own. People have gotten over that, but the conversation remained, which cloud? Due to acquisitions, technology introduction, team's preference, customers have found themselves being on multiple clouds today and now wondering how do you apply policy consistently? Security policy, compliance policy, fiscal policy, whatever policy, how do you apply that consistently? So as we begin to help customers do that, the realization comes in, we no longer have to choose one cloud. We can actually exploit the best of all the existing clouds that we already have in our enterprise. That realization, that having addressed policy and now moving to architecture, having skills on hand through a delivery partner like Kindrel, actually creates an opportunity that frankly, was too expensive earlier. Great, great call out, I wanted you to get that out there, but I want to throw a wrinkle in here. One is the how AI has changed the conversation. Yes. Because now we're talking about data, and another yep. point that was made by the hyperscalers was, by unbundling the focus on the applications and pulling the data out of the app, right. was an interesting comment, because now data becomes the key element to watch between the cloud migrate movement. That's right. So, okay, I have multiple clouds, there might be separate applications, but now I have data yep. that har can be harvested and leveraged by AI. That kind of shines in a, the light on it, and two, creates a mandate. It absolutely does, but, and it started at the edge. Data was being generated at the edge for the longest time, but only in the last five years or so were we able to start harvesting it, synthesizing it, pre-processing it, sharing it back home. Now that problem which existed only at the edge now exists across every one of the multi-cloud landing zones that our customers have. The technology, the methodologies, the architectures that people had done, used for multi-tiered data analysis is one of the routes to use on multi-cloud. There are other routes. Some of the vendors, as you mentioned, Oracle and Azure in particular, are working together to make data access easier. Mm -hmm. But Gen AI, the biggest challenge yeah. it's posing is data management, policy around it, knowing what you're allowed to use and what you're not allowed to use, and making sure that when you use Gen AI to make predictions, are you actually using a representative data set? Yeah. Can you trust the outcome? Yeah. That really puts yeah, so a big it, shine on data. It's not just making the plumbing work. Yes. There's, a, there's a data strategy, there's legal and compliance issues. The other thing too I would, uh, 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 I would say, John and Sunil, is just in observing the, the year of AI, there are a lot of, uh, and we buy the premise that you need to have this sort of, pri what, uh, VMware's calling private AI. Private AI, Because yes. of the, the legal issues, John, yeah. you and I have talked about this a lot, we've done a lot of research in it as well, our power law, yeah. distribution of AI, so it all makes sense. But when you look around at what's available for customers to actually deploy, you got a lot of stuff in the cloud. If, if I want to do things in a hybrid or a multi-cloud or even an on-prem fashion, I see reference architectures, I see a lot of complexity, I see a lot of immaturity, and so that's, again, where you guys bring skill sets. How do you think about bringing that to market for customers? Are you getting a lot of demand for, hey, help, we don't really understand how to, how to make this stuff work? What are the dimensions that they're asking for help in? So that's a great point. So complexity is 
one of the biggest challenges they end up facing. And generally with complexity comes elongated timelines. What our customers are bringing us to us is the desire for agility through minimum viable product that can iterate, deliver value to the organization, because some of the things they're now stepping into are actually culture changes within their organization. Mm -hmm. So waiting for a perfect solution is not really what they're looking for. They're looking for iterative solutions that give insights, allows them to do the change management, skill development, funding um, clarity, while continuing to progress on this journey. So that actually uh, puts a point that we had talked about yesterday with managed services and how managed services now becomes in parallel to this innovation. Enabling it, supporting it, no longer transform first and then manage later, mm -hmm. but rather doing it in parallel streams. So Neil, we've been following Kindle since the, the launch of the, of the venture, yes. the renaming, and seeing the success of it. And now with the whole AI and multi-cloud, it's much more mainstream in the sense of the urgency yes. that they're in. What attracted you to, to join Kindrel? Um, and how do you see the role of Kindrel orchestrating and leading this transformation on behalf of customers? That's a great question, John, thank you. So, um, Kindrel has 75 of the top 100 Fortune 100 companies, equally large number of the Fortune 500, all the major banks, and they have some of the most complex environments, but the innovation drivers they have and what they can do for their customers also poses a great opportunity. So when I was looking, I concluded that that opportunity is probably the richest. Then the next question is, is Kindrel set to actually achieve the opportunity there. And what we find in Kindrel, enormous customer-centric scientists, customer-centric delivery personnel, customer-centric teams, and I'm really excited about the energy in our company to help customers achieve the value from Kindrel. And that requires a variety of operating models. Some customers want to in-source part, outsource part, collaborate in co-sourcing, those various operating models is one of the strengths of Kindrel. And for that reason, I think my, I wanted to join a company that's best positioned structurally to really achieve success in this hybrid world where it's not just clouds that are hybrid, but the entire way IT is delivered is becoming hybrid with DevSecOps, at the same time as Scott's applications, all intertwined delivering value. And I'm excited to see that yeah. my suspicions about this being the company that can deliver it, turning out to be true. You were talking earlier about the, the thinking about the management and the transformation together as sort of a parallel exercise. Right. But when a customer comes to you and says, okay, help us with our, you know, figure out our AI strategy. Uh, you got to, data is obviously a, a critical piece of that. Given. You've got application portfolio, an opportunity to modernize that. Are those also parallel efforts or do you take those sequentially? In other words, hey, you got to get your data order in order before you can even think about that or do you sort of in parallel think about your application portfolio and you know, all the business impacts? Another great question. So your question started off with strategy. Yep. Strategy has to be done in parallel. Mm -hmm. Execution can be serialized and sometimes it needs to be, but strategies always needs to be done in parallel so that you're not coming back to revisit decisions you made. Because of the highly iterative ways delivery happens now, execution not just serialized, but sometimes leading, sometimes trailing, we do see that happening oh. as well. Uh -huh. Sunil, great to have you back on. What a great Thank panel you, Kindrel did yesterday. And I think the panel yesterday that you led um, with, the, with your partners kind of encapsulates multi-cloud. It really did. There was it really good did. conversations, honest, you know, intellectually honest, people were engaged. Um, I've never seen anything like it. It was a very big success. I want to thank you for um, doing that. We really appreciate it. And thanks for coming back on to give thank us more insight into your vision and Kindrel. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, it's theCUBE, we're live here in Las Vegas, the broadcast booth in VMware Explorer. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE and theCUBE. Go to siliconangle.com. Check out our new 
thecubeai.com. That's our special language model. Also go to thecube.net for this video and all of our videos from VMware as well on YouTube, Twitter, and all the social world. All our channels are open. Contact Dave and I. For Dave Vellante, I'm John Furrier. We'll be back with more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>